Hello everyone and welcome to part three of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this part we're going to be going over the theory of how to create our character controller and get our player walking around in the world. So let's get started. Before we jump into code, let's start and think about what we want to achieve. So the answer to that is that we want our 2D sprite to move on our screen as a result of input from the player and we want them to move in the correct direction that the player pressed. If they press the left button, we want a character to, to move left. So now that we know what our goal is, let's talk about how we can achieve it. Let's say we have a character and we want him to move right in the world to collect this coin. So how do we make that happen? Well, to begin, I like to think about what I already know. I know that the player pressed the right arrow and they want him to move right. So we know which direction he wants to move in. And we also know where Tom is in the world. So we can use that to help us move our character. Let's not think of Tom as a character, but let's think of Tom as a point on a graph. Right? So here's Tom and his position is at zero, zero. Now let's say that this blue dot is the coin that we want him to go to and its coordinates are at 10, 0. How do we move Tom's dot from here to the blue dot? I want you to pause the video here and see if you can figure it out on your own. So to move Tom's dot to the blue dot, we can look at the X coordinate of each point. The Y values never change, so we can ignore them for now. To move Tom's dot, we need to ask ourselves, what can we add to Tom's X coordinate, which is 0, that will make the whole thing equal 10, which is the blue dot's X coordinate. We need to add 10 to Tom's dot in order to make it move and its position be equal to that of the blue dot. If we implemented this in code right now, Tom would teleport 10 units every time we press the right arrow key. And we don't want that. We want him to move gradually over time to this position. So to do that, we'll need to give Tom a speed. A speed is a unit of distance over a unit of time. So, for example, cars have speeds in miles per hour. Our unit of distance is miles and our unit of time is an hour. For character movement in Unity, I usually give them a speed of meters per second. And this is because Unity measures its distance in meters. So in this case, let's choose a speed of two meters per second. So our next step is to determine an equation that will change Tom's x-coordinate over time in a specific direction. So let's create a new variable called pn that will represent Tom's new position on the x-coordinate. And let's have one called p sub c to represent his current x-position. So we know we have to add to his current position to move him. So let's add an addition sign. But what do we add to his current position? We need to add his speed to his position, but only adding the speed to the character's position will still result in jumpy movements. So we'll want to multiply by the change in time since the last time we took the movement in order to smooth it out. But what if we want him to move to the left? Take a moment to pause the video and see if you can figure out how you can change this equation to make Tom move left instead of right. So if you paused the video and took a second to look at the equation, you've probably figured out that you can change this addition sign to a subtraction sign to get him to move to the left. This addition sign or subtraction sign is considered to be the sign of our speed and changing the sign of our speed works great if all we want to do is move our character to the left and to the right. But since our game is a 2D top-down game, we'll also need to be able to move up and down on the screen. So far, we've only looked at our movement on our x-axis. To be able to move up and down, we'll also need to look at our y-axis. When we figured out how to move our character on the x-axis, we saw that there was a change in x but no change in y. In this case, however, there is a change in both the x and the y axis. So we'll need to add in or subtract from both the x and the y coordinate. In this example, we want to move Tom, the red dot at 0, 0 to the blue dot at 10, 7. So you could add to the x and y individually, 
and successfully move to this location. But that is twice the work. Um, instead, let's add them at the same time using vectors. Every game object in Unity has a position in the world, and in 2D games, these positions have a X and a Y component. These X and Y components are stored in what's called a vector. In mathematics, a vector has both a direction and a magnitude. A vector's direction can be found by looking at the signs of the numbers that make up a vector. So an important thing to know is that you can add two vectors like you would add two numbers together. To add two vectors together, you'll need to add the x components of each vector together. And for the y values, you'll do the exact same thing. You'll add vector 1y to vector 2y, and you'll get your new y for your new vector. Or in our case, our new world position. So before we can get a new movement equation, we'll need to figure out how we can use vectors as representation of a direction. So in Unity, we're going to receive our input as a normalized vector. So a normalized vector is a vector that has been scaled down so that its values are between 0 and 1. Earlier we talked about how the direction of a vector is determined by the signs of its x and y components. So we can create a vector that represents a direction by using these signs. Let's take a moment to pause the video and think about which direction you think these two vectors point. When you're ready, unpause the video and we can work through it together. So this vector here points left. We can think of our screen as a graph. The negative one is pointing to all of our negative x's, which is on the left side of our screen. Our right vector over here is actually pointing right. And we can tell this because its x value is positive 1, which means that it's pointing at all of our positive x's, which are on the right side of our screen. The vectors that point up and down are vector 0, 1 and vector 0, negative 1, respectively. So we can tell that this points up because the 1 on the y is a positive 1, which means that's going to point at all of our positive y's. And on our down vector, it's a negative one, which means it's going to point at all of our negative y's, which is down. So using this logic, we can use these vectors to tell the equation about our direction. So let's go back to our equation from before. In this equation, the direction is represented by the sign of our speed. So let's change this equation to use vectors. So let Vn represent our new position in the world and Vc be our current position in the world. Next, we have to add our direction to our current position, which we'll represent with Vd. So then we can multiply by our speed and our change in time, just as we did before. All right, so that's it. Um, next time, we're going to be applying all of this logic inside of the engine. We'll start our character controller script and we'll get our character actually moving around.